here we are. This is my uh, second time using StreamYards now. I am loving it. Welcome to another episode of the Jamstack San Francisco Meetup. Yes, I can hear you. We are live and I'm very excited to have you all. Uh, let's do a quick uh, tech check. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Wonderful. I can hear Cop, I can hear Magnus. Everyone is clear. I was really enjoying the countdown music. Um, I got that idea from another stream, uh, Vonage Dev stream. I was just on their stream yesterday for our third episode of building a Vonage and Cloudinary app. Um, for those who do not know me, my name is Tessa Mero. I'm a developer advocate at Cloudinary. I've been there since uh, early last year. I absolutely love the company. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's a fun API that's uh, related with uh, images and video manipulation. I run the Media Developer Experts Program, the MDE program at Cloudinary. It's, um, I absolutely love everything I do and I love being part of the developer communities. And one of the million things I enjoy doing is running the Jamstack Meetup. And originally we were running it in San Francisco. Um, monthly. And now since things have moved virtually, we are here on Twitch. So I'm going to be doing a little bit different things with different meetups. I also run the Vue.js meetup, which I will be doing in a virtual world. So I have a lot of work set up and it's going to be very interesting. I kind of want to do the Jamstack meetup in a virtual world too, but I haven't decided if I want to do that yet. <laughs> So thank you for joining, um, Magnus. Thanks for inviting me. Yes, of course. Let's see, do we have comments? StreamYard, so nice. Oh, thank you, Brian. That's, yeah, um, I've recently discovered it. And more from a gift, a gift from like the Jamstack community. She was telling me about StreamYard. I'm like, what? Why would anyone like leave OBS and use StreamYards? And now it makes sense. It's it just feels like it's natural for meetings and 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 events. Oh, definitely. Look, I can just like pop up people's comments just like that. Look how great that is. So. Yeah, tell me more about you. Why are you here? What what put you where you are at now? Yeah, yeah. Tell I'm me a funny, a, a funny, embarrassing stories because people love embarrassing stories. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Thank you for that one. So while while Cap is looking for for a headset, I can I can start. I'm I'm Magnus. No, I'm right. CEO and co-founder of Sanity. Uh, I, I live out here in the East Bay, so here is uh, is East Bay of, of, of San Francisco. I'm Norwegian, moved here a year ago with my family, uh, two kids and, and my wife. And um, we moved here because it's the um, it's the best place for us to to expand sanity into and, and, and focus on the U.S. The U.S. Uh, I would say the U.S. Uh, community, although sanity is is obviously global, we we see that there were so many things in within our in a space that, I, that is moving very quickly and we want to be be close to uh, where things happen. Um, so so that made a lot of sense for us. Um, all four co-founders of Sanity are Norwegian, actually. And uh, the, the company was started uh, back in, uh, or the product, our MVP, uh, is actually started back in uh, 2015. Um, and my co-founders, and I went around back there. Uh, I was around, but I was a different place. Um, that my co-founders um, had this task for this very, very famous Dutch architect called Rem Koolos to, to help him move out of WordPress. The uh, site is oma.eu. Uh, it's a very cool site uh, built by uh, Simon and Evan and team. And uh, uh, the idea was that um, they wanted a really, really good um, modern way of, of treating a uh, website where we could treat content as data, where you could... Uh, think about rule-based design and, and have something that is really performing. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, they got the task from Rem Koolos to build this. And Rem Koolos isn't a particularly yeah. friendly person. Hey, Cap. Okay, Hello. good, I'm glad. 
Sorry, my audio wasn't working, so I had to go get my headphones. Continue, sorry. No worries. I'm, I'm, t I'm talking about our MVP of Santi from 2015. Rem Kulas isn't a particularly warm person, I, I guess you should say. I never met him. Um, but in the first review meeting, uh, well, because Simon and Evan got this idea that there wasn't anything on the market, and still isn't anything on the market, that, that really gives you a content backend the way that we think it should be. So they made their own. And um, in, the, uh, uh, in the first meeting with, with Rem, uh, he looked at uh, they were presenting something, some thoughts of how this should work, and and he looked at his project leader and he said, "I thought you brought me intellectuals," Ooh. and that was pretty tough. Um, luckily, at the at the final when when this was delivered, um, he said, "There is nothing embarrassing about this platform," and uh, I think in our view that was uh, that was a big success. Obviously, uh, still running for the OMA OMA.eu. Uh, and we moved on since then, uh, bootstrapped and, and done some some fundraisings and, and uh, built um, um, a pretty sizable and very fast growing uh, community. So anyhow, that's a little bit of uh, background. Nothing embarrassing about uh, my own my own self. I, I love um, that. I, I, I but... hear only amazing, great things about Sanity.io. And I, I've watched the demo maybe a year ago. I'm excited to watch this again. I spent five years of my life contributing to an open source content management system. So I understand the pain of a lot of developers with like big CMSs with huge backends and, you know, sanity.io just makes every developer's lives easier and so much more lightweight. So this is, this is really great. And more developers should, you know, at least know that it exists and know that it's an option. So cap, uh, for your nickname, is it Cap or Cap? Yeah, Cap works. Um, yeah. So I the full the name, name, thank you. Yeah, the full <laughs> name is actually um, Kapeheo Kaleni. So it's pretty long. Um, I got it from my mom. It's Hawaiian. And the shortened, <laughs> yeah, the shortened version is Kapehe. And then the even shorter version is Cap. I, I prefer Cap. <laughs> I love it. Thanks. Yes. So how long have you been with Sanity? And tell me more about your role and, and everything. Yeah. So I've been nine weeks now, I think, eight or nine weeks. So just over two months or just at two months. And um, I do developer relations. Um, there's a team the of three of ever. us. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so fun. I love it. Like just being able to create like YouTube videos and speak at conferences and just like be in the community. Our community is really awesome. Um, and we'll talk more about that in like my slides and stuff. But um, that's, I like almost call it our, our like community docs because so many like collaboration happens over there. And like so many like projects are talked about and discussed that there's just so many like answers and solutions that our community is just fantastic. So, yeah. That's wonderful. And that's what that is always the heart of any product is the developer community and it's it's very important and and so is develop i always see developer relations as a heart of of a product as well we you're the the face of the the company the reputation the um talking to developers bringing back information internally externally so yeah this is it's wonderful yeah it's it's great i love it so it looks like we have 25 live viewers right now. So usually with Twitch, they come and they go and they come and they go. So um, it's, it's really neat. Do we have enough pizza? Do we have enough pizza? Oh, I wish pizza was in my diet. I <laughs> So Cop, I, I noticed in your description, like you're into fitness and I'm new into fitness. And I started um, January this year working okay. out. And I never, I never exercised for like the last decade. I got like so chubby last year. I'm like, okay, like I need to do something. I need to make a change. I hired a, a, a fitness coach because I can't tell myself to work out. I need someone to be like, okay, here's your workout schedule. And this is what you have to do. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really hard to just be like, oh, I feel like running today. No, I never feel like running. I feel like sitting down and eating pizza. That's what I, that's the truth. So um, I have a nutritionist that like helps ch like, you know, determine what to eat. And I've been like losing weight so fast and I didn't realize that losing weight requires eating so much food. So as soon as I woke up, I <laughs> ate like, a big protein waffle with lots of blueberries. 
kind of had an energy drink too, but I shouldn't. I'm not. We sorry. actually really <laughs> believe in that stuff with sanity. You know, we're we're a Nordic mm -hmm. company by heart, so we do some things that maybe not be traditional American. So for those who don't know us yet, Cap's going to say more, but we're we're about 36 now, and two thirds of the team are in Oslo in Norway. <clears throat> but we um we take we took a decision that we think mental and physical health is extremely important not only for how you can perform at work but how you are doing in your in your private life which again impacts how you are at work and and we have this philosophy that we that we that we shouldn't work flat out we don't think that is the way to best uh, to make the best product after all like the, the one thing we know as a startup that we're totally outmanned like there's no way we could brute force our way to success we need to be really smart about it and no one is really smart if you don't sleep or you don't like eat healthy or work out or if you have a fresh mind so uh, we actually introduced um, uh, subsidized personal trainers for everyone um, this fall, um, which is uh, which is I think is uh, we're probably going to look back at as one of the best investments we did. Insanity is not something that comes cheap, but it's something that uh, really uh, shows people that we care. Uh, but we also do it because we think long term that's the best way to to um, for us as a team uh, to perform. Um, so let's see how that works out. It's not a common I thing to do. It but um, we think it's smart. That should be a blog post, a sanity blog post, where you talk about like the effects of, of these changes yep. within the company and, and feedback from people, how much more energy, like since I've been exercising and eating healthy, like I have so much energy, like I can think more clearly, I can like get more work done. Whereas before it's like, oh, I got to take a nap. I just feel like a slug and, and it like, it just it actually takes more time. So it's, it's a huge investment, just like going mm -hmm. to the gym. I only go like one hour a day and cardio 45 minutes, lift weight 15 minutes. And I just feel like, a, I just feel amazing. And so I, I used to do a lot of running, um, like a lot of like half marathons and my knee kind of got like bust up. So my cardio of choice right now is biking. And I know Magnus also <laughs> likes biking. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. You, you see me biking around Oakland Hills. I'm not gonna make this up. Like I think we're already into the rabbit hole of training, but yeah, I, I love I love biking. Yes, I that's something I definitely want to get into. We have the last three comments is about pizza. I miss meetup pizzas. Mm. Yes, and and the reason why pizzas are so common at meetups is when you're getting a sponsorship for a small meetup, it's easy to get the funds for about enough to buy pizzas and drinks. And when when people are like, oh, not pizza again, it's like either pizza or nothing, really. And unless you get like a larger sum of money for higher end food, I'm all about the pizza. Gosh, all I can think about is pizza now. I wouldn't have guessed Ken Jones Pizza at Ken Jones Pizza. Yeah, whenever he joins like our streams, um, if pizza's at the end of his, his uh, name and we're always just like oh no pizza now now we all want pizza <laughs> i love it my memphis meetup used to get really good sandwiches it was better but pizza was also good i've yeah sandwiches are always better but pizza is a lot more affordable you can you can keep the food coming at your monthly meetup so but now i'm like kind of pizza should be like a once in a while thing the Jamstack meetup in, in San Francisco, you've had pizza quite a few times, but that's because the Microsoft building, like they, um, the Microsoft reactor, they're, they're really great with, they run, they host meetups for free and they even offer to pay for all like the pizza for everyone at no cost. Like, you know, that's, it's just what Microsoft does for developer communities. And it's something that I, I respect a lot. So there's nothing better than free. <laughs> Yeah. And a uh, quick question. Do you play the piano? I see that beautiful brand a, in the um, back. Watch me squeeze my green screen together. Oh, oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> oh my God, it's a violin behind there. <laughs> you play the violin? <laughs> it's, it's a really messy background that I have. I need to remodel my whole desk area. It's, it's very, um, I have stuff everywhere. No, oh, wait, wait. That's hold on, hold on. The most believable um, background I've ever seen. <laughs> if I just adjust it perfect, it doesn't. Yeah, it's like this is welcome to my mansion. Yeah. <laughs> you don't you don't live in a room like this. <laughs> there. 
That's uh, awesome. A little bit, a little bit more. All right. So if we want to get started, we, whenever you are ready, we have 26 live viewers right now. I'm still trying to adjust my green screen. And let's go ahead and share your screen and see if, um, if everything is yeah. good. Let me get that set up. Sure. When I think about pizza, I think about pineapple on pizza. Pineapple and bacon, extra cheese. Mouth is watering I like, now. I like pineapple on pizza. A lot of people don't. Yeah, I was about to say that's a rabbit hole. Let's let's look. I'm a pineapple on that one. I'm not, I'm not a pineapple, but pineapple pizza person. I, I'm with the Hold on, I'm deleting Brian's comment. So <laughs> <laughs> only pro pineapples will stay in chat. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. I can add your uh, presentation to stream. <laughs> So with, with StreamYards, I have to remove Magnus and I from video. So it'll just be cop presenting, um, or we can keep our videos up here, but then it's just like us scratching our head, watching. <laughs> so if I, um, if I need you guys, I'll holler. <laughs> yes. So just say something. Um, and then cap, if you, uh, I mean, Magnus, if you need to jump in video, uh, let me know in, in that ch chat and then I'll add us back in. I'm, I'm happy right. leaving the stage to cap and I'll come back for a few. <laughs> All right, um, go ahead and take it from here. Cool. All right, it's just, it's just us guys. Okay, let's do this. Um, okay, so we're going to be doing a presentation of getting to know Sanity, but also we're gonna do a live demo and um, Let's hope it all works. And then we're gonna see if you guys wanna join in this live demo that we're gonna do. So getting started with Sanity and enhancing real-time content collaboration. We're all about content collaboration and making sure teams have everything they need. So let me click into this. So this is Magnus here. He did introduce himself, enjoys riding bikes. He's based in San Francisco, CEO and co-founder of Sanity. And then here's me, develop relations. We already did intros, but uh, passionate about teaching and mama to five animals. I have one dog, two cats, and two bunnies. Uh, they're they're the best, and they actually all get along. The dog kind of like takes care of the bunnies, like like she's mama bunny, and then the cats just watch as they jump around. So it's actually really fun. But yeah, that's me. So sanity. Um, what are we? So we're a platform for structured content. And we're also a lot of other things. Open source editing environment, real-time data store, friendly community, command line interface, global company. So I'm going to go over a couple of these just to kind of um, dive deeper into them. But we're a lot of different things. So Sanity is, so we're an open source editing environment. And um, what we are, so this is, we're looking at the Sanity Studio right here. And what this is, is this is our UI for managing content. So we have a lot of cool features that help with team collaboration that happen here in this studio. And we'll kind of show those a little bit, but there's also like plugins you can add, you can change like, so this is the preview. I don't know if you can see my mouse. No, I don't think so. Um, but this like movie column in the middle, that is like our preview and then the interstellar side that's where you do your edits and you add stuff and we can also edit how this schema looks so if we didn't want a poster image we could get rid of that or if we wanted to change poster image name to main image we can also do that and that's done in the code and we'll look into that as well but this is very like customizable so you're able to make sure it's exactly what you need for your team and then we're also a real-time data store. So our con the content that you have with Sanity is all gonna live in the data store. And it's queried from the data store and runs on the cloud. 
So the store can be accessed by one of our client libraries or directly via an HTTP API. HTTP API. Um, and you can export your content out from it at, at any time. So we are also a data store. We are also a versatile query language. So we all know GraphQL and Grok is what we also use at Sanity. So you can choose either one, but it's an uh, in-house made query language. And like GraphQL, both are super powerful, both are super versatile, and they'll help you with content, content querying. So this is um, a little playground that we have, grok.dev, and you can like go in here and put in your queries and make sure the right stuff comes out. But yeah. We are, I always click out of it. We're all, also an image processor behind a CDN. So Sanity comes with a powerful image um, pipeline that does image metadata extraction on upload. So a really awesome thing that I just absolutely love about the studio, and we'll also show this, is you can go in and you can edit photos, like you can crop in there, but also pick a hotspot. So for responsiveness, so say you have, um, you want to do it for mobile, uh, iPad, and desktop. Sometimes you have to upload one image for each of those. But the way that we do it is you upload once, and then you're able to edit and crop, pick a hotspot, and then we will take care of making sure that the image fits in the area. So yeah, and it's all served from the global CDN. We are also a friendly community. And I talked about this earlier. You can join our community at slack.sanity.io um, in here. And I'm just going to go over just a couple of our channels that we have. So we have the announcements one. That's what we're looking at here. And we do this um, shout out for everyone who went into introductions and introduced themselves. And we also talk about the community digest that goes out once a week. So the community digest is like a collaborate, is a collection of the things that are uh, posted and I made this. So the I made this channel is where people can go and show the projects that they've created with Sanity and they'll show us the studio, they'll show us the, the website, um, what made them choose Sanity or why they stuck with Sanity. So this is us just kind of like giving a shout out. And then in introductions, that's where you go and introduce yourself, say what you're going to be building or what you hope to build. And then you see in this screenshot, the Gatsby channel. If there's a front end that you're looking for, uh, Gatsby, 11T, whatever it may be, there's probably a channel for it. So there's a lot of help here and a lot of like communication between the community. So definitely check it out. Again, slack.sanity.io. And then we're also a team uh, with, pa with a passion for great developer experience. So this is just like a collection of photos that you can find our, on our website. Also, some donuts that we've had. Donuts, for those of you who don't know, is for remote teams, you can go in and a Slack bot will like match up three or four people and you just talk about whatever. And then at the end, you like have your coffee together. So um, it's a great team and we're always growing. We're always learning. So it's great. And then also the platform for structured content, content drop down. Um, but yeah, that is Sanity. And then I'm just going to show like a couple cool like projects that were built with Sanity. If I can, yeah. So this one is like a, it's like a, a consulting agency. So powered by Sanity. Waste Not is also powered by Sanity. So you can find sustainable su uh, suppliers, which is really awesome. And engage space, so an event page. And so you can find us in all different types of websites. We handle all different kinds of content and like some, like a writer's blog. We actually have one that's powering dialogue from a medical training dummy. So if we all remember the office when Dwight takes a face off of the training dummy when they're doing CPR, those. <laughs> um, food menu items, uh, spaceship launch data, I don't know, whatever it is, any content that you have, we can help manage that. All right, so live demo time. Now I'm going to 
get out of this, bring that over. Can you all still see my screen? Yeah, okay, I have StreamYard up now, I can see. Okay, so there is a nifty sanity.io slash create website that you can go to and you can create different projects. We also just started the community starters. So this is where you can create your own starter and it can go up on this page. The one that we're gonna work on today is this kitchen sink. Okay, yeah, you can see my mouse. Uh, this kitchen sink and I've already built it out, but let me just show you what it looks like if you were to build it out yourself. So in here, it's super easy. You just sign into Sanity, sign into your GitHub, I already have a repo with this. So if I change it to like five, so that would work. And then connect to Netlify, create project. So once I create project, I'll just do it. We're not gonna be using this one cause I already have one set up, but this get clone, the, I mean the whole command is there for you, but the get clone command is created and then the Sanity Studio is deployed and the website is deployed. And so that just takes a little bit, um, but yeah. So this is sanity.io slash create. And last week we actually did a 14 hour stream where we um, created a bunch of schemas that worked, created a bunch of schemas that were gonna be for this. And so you could pick any front end and use these schemas. Um, my coworker, Brian, and I were on the last seven hours of it, and we created two schemas. One was portfolio, and one was um, like a teacher's schema. So you had like class roster, you had uh, syllabus, uh, the structure of the class, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Brian in the chat, 14 hours. It was, it was long, it was good, we did it. We were all a little exhausted afterwards, but it was fun, we had a lot of fun. All right, so I have a project running, and let me pull it up. This is the local version. Okay, so here's the local version of my studio. Let me make this big and let me actually zoom in here. So what this is, is this is actually coming up with, and I'm trying to pull up there. So this is the local version of the website as well. So after you build it all out and you get it running, npm install and then npm run dev, and then this comes up, if we were to look at some of like the similarities, so I've done like some testing. So a test, I won't actually publish, where you see a test is right there. So I'm gonna change this to, I'll do Jamstack San Francisco meetup. And then I'll publish that. And then right away we see Jamstack San Francisco meetup updated. So it's real like, super real time down here. We could probably do, I'll, I'll do the same thing. And then publish that. So throughout the website that we have, um, it's just updating as we go and we can just run it locally and yeah, see it all. So we also have a blog and I wanna show you how to um, change our schema. So in here we have, we'll do exploration powered by structured content. So if we click into this and I'll zoom out just a little bit, just so the words aren't so big. Well, I guess that's not too bad. So here's what that blog post looks like. We're gonna actually add an author and uh, my picture will show, or I think I have my picture downloaded, but my picture will show up here, at least my name. My name. And then let's go edit this and yeah. So over here, if we go to blog, I'll post, we find the one that we were in right here and see how it's like collapsing on the side. So if we collapse right here, we kind of get like a full screen, but we still have our path of where things are. Uh, let's change this to exploration with sanity, yeah. And then if we hit generate, it will actually look at that title and generate a slug for us. Main image, okay, this is what I wanted to show you. Okay, so if so, we have our image, we've already uploaded it. If you wanna upload another one, you click there. If we click on edit, and I, I just love this feature. Okay, 
So in preview, we have portrait, square, landscape, panorama. If we make this smaller, notice how those are all changing. And if we change this, that changes the hotspot. So, okay, let's do this. Because we want panorama to be big. I think someone's in here with me. No. Okay, there we go. So it's the full thing. And then I'm going to hotspot onto this person and close that. Publish. I mean, it's, nothing really should change for us because we still have that person in there. But let me show you what it looks like if we were to get rid of that person and hotspot on something else. So let's hotspot on that. Let's get rid of that person. So we should see, because we have like a landscape on our website, we should see something like this. So let's close that up, publish. No, let me try it one more time. Hmm. Okay, that hotspot over here. Yeah, I always blame cash. Close, publish. Let me let me restart my server real quick. Live coding, am I right? <laughs> okay, it's restarting. Um, okay, <laughs> my server won't start back up. Um, oh no. Okay, so my server won't start up, but let's just get out of localhost then, and I'll just show you, because we have it hosted. Uh, so yeah, if we did the blog here, same thing. Oh, it's updating over here, and it's updating over here. Okay, I didn't even need to need. I didn't even need that. So there it is, and we had it local, but it's also on our uh, deployed one. So yeah. That is how that goes. Now, let me show you how to add a schema. Let me go to my schemas. Wrong one, post. Okay, so this is what the code looks like. And you guys can all see that, yeah. I hope that's, I hope that's big enough. Um, okay, so here, if we notice, we have the title, we have the slug, and that all matches up with what's happening over here. If we wanted to add something like um, one example that I had was so like project type and because it's not uh, running locally, I can't get my server to start back up. I'm just going to show you what the code would look like and then we'll see if I can get it running again. So anywhere within here, we're just going to create a new thing. So I'm going to create a, pro a a type. We'll do a blog post type. And in this type, we'll be able to have like a drop down. So name, we will name it a uh, blog post. No. Blog post type. And then title is going to be the one that has like, like this blog post type. And then type will be string. Now to do a list in this, we're going to do options and then list and open up an array. And we're gonna do a list of however many things we want. We're gonna give it a value and we'll do, uh, we'll do a personal blog post and then name it personal. And we just go down the list, we could do let me see, 
in the chat. Anyone have ideas for options on the drop down? I'll do personal. I'll do maybe we do a school blog post. <laughs> um, school. And yeah, so blog post categories, Tessa just asked, what is that? So that's like, so we're just going into our schema and we are giving our blog posts like a, a type. So this is just like organization for me as uh, the studio owner. And so what I'm doing here is I'm making it so I can have like my personal blog posts have a tag of personal or like school. Uh, Brian said guest. I like that one. So maybe you were a guest author on another blog. We'll do guest author. Oh, I see. I see pets. Yeah, I'm going to do pets. I should write a blog post about my pets. Would anyone read it? Uh, my pets. No, we could do all pets. So just pets. Yeah. Because maybe you write about someone else's stuff. Okay. So save that. And let me try this again. And it's. Okay, so it's not able to show. I'm so sorry, I can't get my uh, thing to start up, but um, if if it did, it would have a drop down right here and we'd be able to see like a drop down and then you could click like pets or whatever. Now, if we go to authors, so we have Cap, we have Magnus, we have uh, an AI generated author. Uh, but if we added author to a post, go back to all posts, explore with sanity, author, so we can add. And down here, we have a drop down. Magnus is in there. Brian is in there. So if we choose me, we can choose Magnus. Oh, close. Now add me, close. And then Brian, no photo, Brian. That's okay. And then if we look here, we can actually switch it around. And because on our blog right here, we have only one person viewing, whoever is at the top on this particular one is who's going to be showing. So yeah, so I would show up in this one. And yeah, that's all good to go. Um, Tessa says, can I bring all five pets on the stream at the end? I have two bunnies that might not be okay with that, but we'll see. Um, usually my cat and my dogs are like walking around. My cat was actually sitting where that sloth was earlier, um, but I had to I had to move her. All right, Magnus just added a photo for Brian. Oh, there it is. Oh, and that was very live. Okay, so what's happening in the background that I wanted to really point out is Presence API. So because we are all about um, team collaboration, we want to make sure that if you're working in a studio with your team, that you can see where each other are. So I'm going to show you all how that works. So up here at the very top, see how these little avatars are showing up? If I click on that, I can actually see where my teammates are. So let's go see where Magnus is. I'm going to click on this little link thing. And he's editing Brian's name, Brian the man. And I can go in there, I can edit that. Once he's done, I mean, as he's as he's typing, I really can generate this slug for him. And then I could go in, I could edit, and I could say, I wanna make sure his glasses are shown. And it keeps, yeah, something like that, I can edit that, I don't know. Uh, Brian Headshot, I could do Brian, um, I could do Brian's, like if we really want like plural. Look, and then we see in here, we have Brian showing up editing his bio. So as we see here, I can go to where I am and my teammates can also go to where I am. And then Magnus and Brian. So Magnus and Brian, if you guys want to come find me, so we can actually watch as they join where I am, their little avatars, popping up in this. So if they want to join 
Magnus, if you want to come find me. Looks like someone says you're on a local host version show code changes instantly. Mm. I see. Thank you. I'll get that going. Okay. Yeah, Sanitier. That's a cool name. Oh, Peter. Peter. Hi, Peter. I only know because of his picture. Okay, so they're starting that back up. Maybe I'll refresh. Okay, so I'm in this title. Let's see. Oh, yeah. No, that late. So Magnus said that latest Apple update is killing my Mac. That is also happening to me. <laughs> All right. So Brian just showed up and I can kind of see if he moves around. And Magnus just showed up and they're all hanging out with me at this title. And yeah, so this is presence. And we actually want to see um, Magnus. I don't know if you want to come back and we can like do this together. But we want to see if any of you want to try out presence with us. And if you want to come in and like do this, like clicking around the studio, editing, seeing where other avatars are. But yeah, if just anybody wants to. Just add your email in the. Just add your email in the Twitch comments, and I'll add you. Yeah. Ah, oh, James, I don't know your email by heart. James, pick me, pick me. All right, so Magnus is going to be adding those, and once we have a bunch of you. Tessa, in... here go. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Hey, I'll, Tessa. I'll, I'll keep on adding people. Cool. Tessa, I think you just got access. But yeah, this is our this is our like newest feature that came out uh, about a month ago, and it's super awesome. It actually, because I mean, we work in the studio every day at work, and so we um, are able to see the benefit and like how easy this is for cross team like collaboration. Oh, there's a lot. Um, do you want me to help or you got it? I got it. I'm, okay. I'll keep on typing. Cool. So, okay, I see Tess is in there. You guys can still see my screen. Yeah. Okay. So Tess just showed up. And, yeah, if you go in there, you can, like, change the title. You can go into blog, um, authors, and up here. So in this little edit button, create new author, you can go create your own author, which would actually be kind of cool. We can have a bunch of authors lined up. Um, okay, looks like, oh, and I'm watching Tessa as she types it in from this like preview column. So if I click there, I can see her little avatar. Looks like she's picking a picture. So those of you all are added now, just, um, just go to your email and, uh, if you're not already on the sound, if you make sure it's the same email, you log in and, uh, you should be there. And any bugs you see, please report them to us. Cool. On our yeah. Slack. James, you have to create a new author, okay? I can, I can say a few words about why we're why we're doing this. It's, it's kind of like obvious that you want to see where people are, but um, we actually spent I think we had this feature almost done for more than a year before we actually took the time to release it. We see it as a bigger bigger part of making Sanity the place you could come to collaborate on content. We find, we find it terrible that a lot of these systems, or most systems, honestly, um, are such that you can't really create the workflow you want to come together and be creative on, on, on making the content that is important for you. So you often end up moving out to Google Docs or, or you're confined to some predefined workflow, especially with a monolithic. Uh, softwares that that you don't really want to, uh, that you really uh, don't want to work in. So we've been working a lot on previews, making sure you could see your content wherever it should go. You don't have to move out of Sanity to see that. You could implement a preview. You could have workflows, um, and 
And uh, this is actually, a, this feature is a little bit of a teaser on something bigger that we will uh, present uh, to, the, um, uh, to the community uh, or to everyone uh, next week. And it it's all goes into the, to the spirit of how can we make Sanity the best place for you as a team to work on the content, the way, call it what you like, put the content models up the way you like them, get the workflows the way you like them. But we saw that there were important gaps in, in the real time. Status is always been real time, but the real time experience you have when you collaborate with others. So seeing where other people are, seeing what they have done is, is, is quite, a, quite an important uh, thing. So if, if anyone has any questions about Sanity, please do um, ask now and I will post your question up on stream. Um, one thing I'd love to know or possibly the audience is more interested in is like what is happening behind the scenes, the architecture layout, where the data is going and, and so on. Yeah, you wanna, you wanna talk about it? Um, Cap, or you want me to give a high level? Uh, you, can, you can take this one. Yeah, so I'm happy to. Um, and as it says in my bio, I'm, I'm not one of the technical founders and architects of this, so I'll, I'll keep it high level. But so, but basically, what you're seeing is Cap being in a studio that is hosted on Netlify, uh, and they can be hosted anywhere. So Sanity, as 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 Cap said, is is just a single page React application. It's open source. You get it. You 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 deal with it. You break it. You fix it. You develop on it. Um, in our signup flow, we, we automatically deploy it to Netlify for you, together with an example of the web page. We're, we're working with Vercel. We're going to get Vercel on there, uh, there as well. You can also deploy that uh, studio with, with Sanity. We could host a studio for you. But that, we're not really in that, in that business. When you're working with the studio and you saw um, the other studio that, that we kept, for some reason, we had some problems uh, getting, getting that working. Um, that's the that was the React application she had locally on her computer. So where you're working with the application as such and what we call a Sanity Studio, the offering interface, it depends. Now, always the content sits in our backend. So Sanity is not a full open source software because we believe that the backend that we're building, first of all, you don't want to deal with it. It's a complicated application. It's real time scalable and all those things. So whenever you're writing something and every you know, we have what ten people in the studio now. When they're writing, uh, we're sending patches uh, back to the Sanity to backend through the APIs, and uh, all the data is being stored. We built the platform. Um, some of the technology we use is Elasticsearch, Postgres, together with um, a lot of a lot of applications we've built uh, ourselves, mainly in Go. Um, we hosted everything on uh, on GCP. Uh, and uh, our main instance currently is in, in Belgium. Uh, we got globally distributed CDN, so you would you would experience this as fast. Uh, the main APIs when you write to them are goes back to EU and to Belgium. Um, so uh, Sanity is kind of like a, a hybrid open source, and, and and we're often quoted as a, as a closed source because in reality the totality isn't open source. But the important thing for us has been that the best way to consume a content experience we believe is to control the content experience. We think the software should bend around how you want to work, not you bend around how the software had some least common uh, denominator of how people should work, and then you take it take a week of training to, to use a CMS, and it has 10,000 buttons. And in order to do that, we need to give you the code. And the only way to give it that code is MIT. And of course, that means we want you to work with the code um, and, 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 uh, and control what you want. We're, we're actually... Uh, making we have more steps in making sanity even more customizable that we're going to move into now move, moving forward um that, that hopefully will blow some minds when we get that out but it's always a purpose for us that you could you could work with the application as it's being yours but we always treat the content for you um in the back end uh and uh, we should do that in a very good and efficient way make it easy for you to distribute your content anyway so so with sanity it's not just a like not just a tool for creating blogs. You can create more advanced and complex applications, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah and, and, and we think about Sanity as being in a ubiquitous tool between develop, developers and businesses who have more complex needs. Because we see that a lot of our about 50,000 users to date um, use Sanity for simpler use cases where you often could use another tool to get the same result. 
However, we see them choose sanity because of the working experience very often for the developers. That is, after all, our core, our number one persona. Um, in order to, to have good tools that work with the tools you use to work with, et cetera. Um, so we see sanity being used on a, on a lot of, of, of simpler things. But of course, as a business, um, we we focus on the more complex need that would need more, both uh, some of our features. There are very few features, but some that we, we exclude for, for the enterprises uh, or for the businesses and, um, uh, and often have more complex needs. And typically that isn't simpler web pages. And very often it isn't web pages at all. So one of our customers that were at the Jamstack conference last year is Restaurant Brands International, parent company of Burger King and Popeyes and Tim Hortons. And any picture you see of a Whopper in North America and now also in, in Canada, that's North America, and the UK comes out of the Sanity backend. No matter whether you're looking at the mobile uh, app or the the, um, uh, the web page or their in-store ordering kiosks. And we even have, if you think about it, our, our, our logic is that uh, it, it isn't a web CMS. We don't understand the, the, the term web CMS because we're living in a world where all these different applications that would converge into digital workflows for whomever going to view your content, uh, a, a customer, if it's if it's a business. And um, for that, we need to we need to be able to store content as data, so it could be distributed and distributed anywhere. And that also means that we think of ourselves as a content platform more than we think of ourselves as a CMS or a code as a headland CMS, which is fine. But that's not how we think about ourselves. Um, and it really lets you use it for anything. So we even have, of course, books. The, the OMA project I spoke about, our MVP serve books as well. Uh, that makes sense for us. Uh, but also we have, like the most extreme we have, that's Norwegian medical company that actually use Sanity to store the scenarios for a CRP doll that they use in training centers as a product. So they implemented Sanity into OEM, into their product. Um, and there's no screen. There's just a doll responding to whatever you're doing with it based on scenarios that are stored in in um, Sanity. And I'm sure you'll see a lot more of that uh, as we go. When, when, when a developer chooses a product, like the big question they always have is like, if, if I'm choosing Sanity, what is unique about Sanity that stands out uh, in comparison to other similar products? Like how, how would you describe that? Um, for me, when I started using Sanity, so my portfolio is Sanity, all my content is there. It was the studio. It's like, mm -hmm. it's local. I can run it locally, but I can also have like my own hosted version of it. And I don't have to go um, to someone else's website. It's, it feels like it's, it's mine, you know, it's my studio, it's my content and I'm managing it. And it's so customizable. Like, like even this preview of the author's column that we have right here, all of this can be edited and like changed to however you want. It's not, it's not restricted to what they've decided as a company. It's what I decide. And I have like a very organizational mind. And so this like organization that the studio gives me is a big reason why I, like started with it and why I stay with it. Yeah, we're 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 a big fan of sanity at, at my company and and um, a, a big choice for content creation. So this is very yeah. very cool. Yeah, I think I think you have something cooking and it also when I spoke to Duron. So yeah, we're very happy working with <laughs> it's a very, very big project and yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think there's, there's also like sanity is that there are waves of things <clears throat> that you will see that differentiate us. And the further you start digging, uh, the more you, you would, you would see that is it, it the, then that's when people start saying, Hey, this isn't a CMS. This is really a content platform. I think, I think some of those waves, um, uh, and the studio is obviously the first thing that you could control it, define the content model, um, and, and work very efficiently as that. When you start digging into, uh, the way we define text, we call it portable text. This definitions are open source. Maybe Brian want to want to post a link um, to uh, uh, to the specifications in, in the chat. The uh, uh, the way we don't use Markdown, you can force in Markdown, but but, but our point is that you need to express content uh, in a very flexible way, but let it read very simply in a human human way. You don't want people to read JSON, but you want to define a content model in JSON. We call it portable text. Um, it is extremely powerful in terms of you could basically define anything you want. Uh, thank you, and include anything you want. So yeah, go read about that. I think also tying with this, because of our thinking, we saw the need to invent our own query language. And inventing a query language isn't something you should take lightly. Likely enough. But we built Grok, and, 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 and Brian will post the link for grok.dev uh, as well. 
Now, Crook is a general query language that lets you query like a database. Because we're, we're big fans of, of uh, GraphQL. Uh, we have, obviously, GraphQL's first class citizen uh, at Sanity. But by having this own query language uh, where you could define the queries, query in joins, and get exactly what you want, you're, you're more efficient both when you're developing but also um, in your production. And it's a little did bit you, of a like. Did you, yeah. did you say that Sanity created its own query language? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, is there, yeah. is, OK, that's what it is. All right, I thought that was yeah. like a completely external tool. Is there is there a reason why you decided this this is important for us to have our own built-in tool rather than um, using ex any existing query language products? Yeah, because we don't you don't get the flexibility that you need from a, from a REST definitely, and and also not from from a GraphQL API. And we think GraphQL APIs are are good, uh, but if you really want something that that behaves more like a, um, a database query language where you could have much more flexibility in how you actually work with the, with the data you have, you could actually think about Sanity as a, as a, as a real-time JSON database with really good APIs, very flexible user interface that you, you want to use. But, but at the core, it's a JSON database that's real-time, extremely scalable, and has its own query language. So um, we have also written about how we, how we think about not only our query language and the way we think of our database, but we also made some... some um, some uh, partial compiler and some other fun stuff uh, in our backend team um, to to show the way we think about and how we work with ourselves as a, I would say, as a content database and as a as a database abstraction. Uh, we're we're not competing with Fauna. We're good friends with with Evan and the team, and they they're they're having a different thing. There there are a bunch of things you don't want to put into Sanity, like a high uh, real time series of data, uh, user data, you should put somewhere else, et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes to content, your content should live at Sanity. Um, it should be linked if you're another source of truth, but Sanity should be the place that you think about as your content platform for easily access it, easily work on it programmatically, and then distribute it anywhere. Oh, that's, that's great. Um, something I'm interested in reading about, so I'm going to have to save that link. Awesome. And I know you said you had a hard stop for another meeting, right? I'll push that one so we have some more time. Oh, wonderful. Any questions about sanity or about their personal life? Not too personal, though. There, there's always that, that line you don't cross. <laughs> yes, I like pineapple and pizza. <laughs> I like mushroom, not pineapple. So I don't get my uh, food cheat day until second weekend of October. I'm trying to like get through 50% of a, my a program before I can eat whatever I want. Nice. And pizza is number one on my list. It is waiting. I am counting down the days on the calendar. <laughs> I'm trying to get to a, a very specific body fat percentage goal before I can start getting crazy. <laughs> I left Ken Jones up because of the pizza shirt. So we can all remember about pizza. Yeah. Oh. I'm doing pretty cap. If there are no questions, should we show something? Maybe I'm being eager here, but like we got something cooking that I'm really, really looking forward to showing people. And I mean, we do um, have. Is it, is it like a sneak peek? Yeah, like a little sneak peek of something. Yeah. Like like before an announcement type of sneak peek, because <laughs> people love that. <laughs> Do they? Like, do they want that? I see no one asking for I it. See, so. I see. Everyone say yes, because I want to see. Say yes, say yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Tears up NDA. <laughs> <laughs> Sneak peeks. Make sure. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Chat is going crazy. That's a yes. <laughs> so they are, they are uh, watching. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's... I'm creating a new banner. Show us the secrets. Okay, I'm gonna. <laughs> you want me to pull it up? Bad yeah, I'm just, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, go for it. There we go. Show it's, us. It's not like this. It's recorded and broadcasted, is it? Oh, definitely recorded, broadcasted <laughs> live, saved forever on the internet. I'll be sure yes. of that. <laughs> is that what the internet does? It saves <laughs> yeah. everything forever. Forever. <laughs> go for it, Cap. Okay, I am pulling it up. Show right. us the secrets. That's Hold really on, cool. I, I can do a little ticker at the bottom with StreamYard. Very professional, as you can see. 
Okay, I'm getting a little dizzy from that. All right, I'll hide it. Okay. Okay. Okay, Magnus, you want to talk them through what this no, shows? Go for it, Cap. Okay, so this is a 47 second video of something that you all will be seeing in like a week ish, week or two. Ooh. So, in here, we're going to see. Okay, presence. We see presence. That's what we've been playing with. Okay, clicking around. Now someone's going to change something. Notice this little sidebar right here. I'll pause it real quick. This little sidebar. So what this is doing is as someone edits, they have like a history of what was happened. So it'll save what it was before you create edits. And then if you need to revert back, so you're able to review changes that were made. Hence the name, Review Changes. So you'll see even like the images we do it, you'll see like the first one and then what it was edited to. And then if you hover, this is a video, so I'm not, I can't hover over it, but oh yeah, there we go. That was perfect, good timing. I will pause it right when it shows it. So if you hover over that, it shows who made the edit and when they did. So super excited about this. Um, this will allow for like, so presence like led into this for us, that team collaboration of, okay, what, what's being edited, what's being changed. And I want to make sure that we're not, you know, changing things that aren't supposed to be changed or, oh, whoops, we can't release this yet. We need to revert back. And we have 14 more seconds of this teaser video. And so, yeah, so as they change, it types over here and you can see that. You can revert all changes. And then even like that little line was changed. I added a period. And so you can see my color on it. So it's very like colorful. It's very, uh, I mean, the UI is fantastic on it. And then that's it. So what does everything, what does everyone think? It's getting fancier and fancier. Yeah. Like, you know, now I'm wondering what is it gonna look like in a year from now, five years from now? <laughs> it's gonna just grow. You're not gonna recognize it, right? It's it's um, it's also the, the the interesting thing is that we always we always had this like this project wasn't about making sanity real time and patch based and storing storing all these changes you made because we always did that. Um, we truncate them after a time, but uh, uh, the the point here was to create the workflows and to make sure that we can expose the real timeness and expose the um, uh, the, the changes that you're doing so it's easier to work together. We saw that a lot of people spent time outside our tool when they were working with content. And uh, I can say pretty surely that this is the first, we've been at collaborative features um, uh, for a year. Um, and after developer experience, collaborative features have been kind of a um, developer experience of customization and collaborative features have been a second um, kind of like to, to, to stand on. And we have some more that you will see over time if you follow us. Uh, we think it's extremely important, not just as replacing kind of Google Docs in terms of tracking the changes, but the ability you have to, to work as a team. None of your changes are actually reverted or deleted. Uh, we, it's, all, it's all a new patch being written over it. And, and you can go back and you can see what happened here, who did these changes, or you could change all the changes, so you could pull them all back again. Um, and and uh, the way one of, one of the special things with with Sanity is that all the flexibility we have in how you structure you can have multiple data set, you can have multiple studios. The way the way you structure um, your your architecture with with Sanity also makes it extremely important that you're able to track the changes and go back and and um, and revert them um, in order to keep your your velocity when you're working as a team. So that's been some of the thinking behind this, and we spent quite a lot of time. So yeah, we're looking for, we're, we're so eager, we're showing it before time, we're, we're looking forward to to uh, to getting this properly out uh, now very, very soon. Yeah, yeah that's, that's always appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, there's, there's also a date for it. We actually, uh, we need to say that. Um, there should be a tweet out. We're, we're running um, our all hands conference uh, next week in Sanity. Uh, from Monday to Wednesday, and we figured the best way to end off uh, an all hands was to open the house, have an open house, and, and invite everyone in the community to come. So next Wednesday, I don't remember exactly the time, 
we're going to have a uh, open house where you can come and meet everyone at Sanity, hang around and hop in, um, chat with us about high and low, serious or informal, as you as you see fit. We will all be there. Uh, and uh, we'll be all eager to show things. And uh, I think the tweet says that we we may have something that we will uh, that we will uh, announce that day. And who knows what that thing may be? I think uh, we'll figure out it as um, something to do with collaboration. I guess. Andre said, "Is it the same day as the Jamstack conference?" Uh-oh. Yeah, unfortunately, it's uh, but it's the uh, it's the day with the it's the it's the second day with the uh, workshops. So unless uh, Henry, you you bought a ticket to all the paid workshops, uh, hopefully uh, you could still make it and you know come by for ten minutes or for an hour or <laughs> for two or whatever you feel like. Oh, oh you got two I monitors. Have two, there yeah, two monitors. There you go. One I one thing I've learned is not to stress out too much on dates because no matter what date you pick, there's going to be an overlapping event. I think no. the only thing that you should be considering is international holidays. Like yeah. having events on Sundays is probably always a bad idea. Um, yeah. It excludes a lot of um, individuals. So yeah, one thing I want to do real quick is raffle off really quick a $50 Amazon gift card or a gift card um, if you don't have Amazon. Um, there's this URL that I just load and it pulls up a random person in, in chat. So I'm going to give this, I'm going to post this link in the chat and I'm going to let Cap load it on yeah. her screen, Gemstex. So that way you guys can see that it's really random. It's not just pulling the same name over and over again, because that's what it would look like if I wrote a, a random person generator. <laughs> okay. So if Go ahead and open that link cap and okay. it should pick someone random. I hope hopefully it doesn't pick me. Just if it picks me or you or us, um, just reload, reload it. Okay, here it, it goes. Work. It should work. It's okay. You might have to make that really, really big. <laughs> okay, so that's like a built-in Twitch bot. So let's refresh the page again. It's it's shown as a um, sanitaire. Well, that's yeah. fine. If, you, if you're a viewer, that's fine. So Sanitier, are you there? Twitch bots are people too. Eventually, robots in the future, Eventually. in the far future, will argue that they are real. I mean, I'm sure you can talk to a robot and they'll argue that they are yeah. real. Because that's built into, are you there? <laughs> it's built into the database that that's how they should respond. They will uh, debate with you that they are real. <laughs> oh, uh, it was Peter. It was, yes. it was it was our colleague Peter. Yes, so Peter. he wants to give it to someone else. Can we draw again? I'm gonna hit hit yes, it again. You can draw again if he wants to do that. Brian. Okay, Brian. another okay. sanity person. I'm gonna do it one more time. It's like it looks like we stuffed. Okay. <laughs> Les Cross, are you here? Let me um, tag you, Les Cross. Les Cross. Yay. Yay. Okay. Yay. Well, can you email me at tessa at cloudinary.com? And then I will, you have to send me an email today and I will s- let me know your region, like US, Europe, and then I'll send you a $50 Amazon gift card. And that's sponsored by the program that I run, the Media Developer Experts Program. Um, that's Cloudinary sponsors. So yeah, pulling it right out of the budget, straight to you. That's um, fun. Awesome. Can we, can we, can we tag on that? Can we can we offer a t-shirt and a, and a, and a community plan? Yeah, also? yeah. Yeah, okay, so email Magnus at Sanity.io and uh, Magnus at sanity.io, correct? Yeah. So email Magnus and you can get some sanity swag. Yay, right on. And That's then fun. Les Cross has to email me for for the gift card. So great. Uh, any final questions from the public? Or if anyone has a cool project, make sure you um, head over to slack.sanity.io and share it there if you don't want to do it here. But yeah, we're there, we're hanging yeah, out. Yeah, to the open house, like bring your own sanity mm-hmm. project and show it to us. We'd love to see that. Very cool. Definitely um, do that if you can, if you're available next Wednesday. Um, what is the information for the open house again? I'll 
type it? Or is it going to be posted on Sanity's uh, Twitter? Uh, we should have it already. Do you remember the time? It's uh, Wednesday next week. There was a tweet going out. Or not? I don't remember the time. I don't remember the time. There'll be a tweet coming out from Sanity next yeah. Wednesday. I think it's 10.30 Pacific time. It's definitely morning yeah. Pacific time because we're catching Europe and and uh, we have a good colleague in Tasmania. That's a hard one. I'm not sure if you're gonna if you're gonna be on, uh, but otherwise we will be there. Yeah. Wonderful. All right, chat. This is your last chance for any questions or comments, or uh, mentioning your favorite pizza. <laughs> Interna international yeah. business is hard. All always. But we make it um, work. 30. We all do. Yeah, ever, a lot of people on my team and my company, um, half my company is from um, Europe. I'm not Europe, but on the other side of the world. Israel is kind of like, I think it's officially Asia. It's it feels like it's on the border somewhere. I'm afraid someone's going to quote me and, and laugh, so I'll stop right there. Don't worry. There's one country that is both Asia and Europe, and it's Turkey. So, you know, if, if you have a lot yeah, of people there, I you're good. I see it as both. I see it as both. And it's funny because I'll ask a lot of Americans, like, oh, what 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 continent do you think it's in? And, like, I get different answers from everyone. Like, okay, I'm not the only one. But, yeah, it's it's an amazing country. I've been there several times already. Uh, we have our company meetings in Israel, and, and I love Israelis and their culture. It's, it's so amazing. Yeah, so, which, which means a lot of Israel is definitely Asia. For me. Israel is definitely Asia, but you know, I can I can help you, Tass. You're right because you have the European Song Contest, uh, and they're in on that, which then confuses people, right? Because it's yeah, supposed to be European, but they're Asian. So there you go. They're kind of like both. Yeah, I've said that, that Israel is in Asia. Like you're joking. Stop messing with me. Like that's not funny. Like, but it's the Google tells me it. <laughs> Yeah, and, we'll and our open it house well. is on Wednesday right. at eleven thirty PST. Thank you. Cool. Wednesday eleven thirty. Perfect. Well, any final words from both of you? Uh, thank you for having us. This was super fun. Uh, we talked all things pizza and all things sanity. So, oh, and then I have really great things. I have one kitty that showed up at I the very end. Sloth. I see a sloth. Is that? Does that count as a pet? Then I have six, if that counts, yeah. <laughs> he, she's always hanging out in my streams with me. Aw. That's yeah. cute. My camera yeah, does great. Thank you so much for having us, and uh, see you all over at the, um, at the Sanity Slack channel, for those who want to yeah. learn more. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Um, thank you so much for both of you for your time on uh, coming here and showing everyone a demo and talking about all cool things with Sanity and, and Sanity Secrets. We always love that. And until next time, I'm uh, for the next Jamstack meetup. I have not set that up, but I'd like to have one sometime um, mid to end, probably end of October. So if you have an idea of what kind of demo or what company everyone wants to see next, let me know and I'll connect with the company and, and get that set up. So yeah, thank you very much everyone. And I'm gonna go ahead and end the broadcast. Um, stay thank tuned you. for, thank you. Stay tuned for Jamstack updates. Visit the, um, the Slack channel. I think it's slack.com slash Jamstack possibly. And yes, ending it now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.